So it is a typical February Pennsylvania day right now. It's been cold and windy and it'll be sunny for 30 seconds and then a snow squall for the next 90 seconds and it's kind of been like that all day. So uh, I, th I just checked the temperature. It was like 34. It's been hovering around 34-ish degrees, but it's windy. The wind chill has made it feel like about 18 or 19 degrees degrees so chilly so you can see above me here the flies are super comfy I, I just actually picked up like five or so pairs of um, mating flies on the floor because they are super happy with I don't know why they like that light but they like that light but the temperature in here is like 79 close to 80, 80 degrees right now and I am not running any heat I'm running zero auxiliary heat right now so what that means is I've fed them so much food and I am feeding so many larvae they're just sustaining the heat in this room just like perfectly and uh, I'm feeding roughly in this room 90 bins uh, in the room over behind my shoulder here, uh, I have, I think, 10, so about 100 bins of larvae I'm feeding right now. Um, and so I did not expect this, did not expect this, full stop. Um, I just wanted to make sure food didn't get thrown away into the landfill anymore. And thought, well, let's try larva. And now I am basically heating my own operation based off of the amount of food that I bring in. So uh, just for uh, just for your information, uh, on Wednesday, we processed just about 480 pounds of food. And a lot of it was kind of uh, was meaty um carby it's the time of year where it's not a lot of veg vegetal material um there's a lot of cheese this week i don't know why uh cheese meat um carby stuff so kind of the perfect feed stock for winter time um if i had gotten all of that in the summertime this would be a totally different story um, these little kittens open the door so they can sneak in and warm up. It's adorable and infuriating at the same time. Anyway, so in the summertime, 500 pounds of meat and cheese will create a different problem. Um, Right now, this isn't a problem. This is great. This is feeding a fire when the fire needs to be stoked. Um, in the summertime, I have to make sure my fans are running optimally. Right now, I have fans running just to keep the heat circulating through the room. So I have a fan over here, right here, and that's kind of pointing up and kind of circulates the air like this way and then I have this thing here which my dad made for me um, because before I was just duct taping furnace filters together um, it's just gloriously duct taped together there is nothing fancy about this and then with a duct tape box fan on top and um, by the second go around of that that was just stupid and waste of duct tape. So now I have this that with a, a higher power fan too. So this moves a lot more air and I don't have it running right now because it's just loud. Um, but like you can see, uh, maybe you can see, I don't know. It, well, I'll read it. Uh, it says it's 92 degrees in this fly hutch here and it says it's 75 in here, but it's, it's warmer than that. It lies essentially. Um, and so that there's a there's a vent hole there and then down below here there's a small fan that also pulls 
pushes air from the processing room into here. So the warm air in here goes through that hole right there. And in the processing room, I run the dehumidifier, which if you watched my biggest fan video, uh, I talk a little bit about that. But basically the dehumidifier is totally necessary because so much water uh, is pushed out of the feedstock into the air um, and then it would condense on my greenhouse plastic walls that create the processing room adjacent to this room. And all that moisture makes for unsavory situation. We'll say that. So I run the dehumidifier over there, which also that, that makes a little bit of heat, that generates a little bit of heat. Um, and that basically keeps that room nice and comfy. So, all right. The lowest temperature we've had at night has been 16 degrees outside. Um, the lowest temperature in the processing room, just running the dehumidifier and running the, the fans, the lowest that room has gotten might have been 50 degrees. And then the lowest that this room, the larva room has been, um, I think 69. And um, that's, that's, that's all, that's all larva. It's all larva. Um, so how flipping cool is that? I just, I, I just, I just think it's so, so wild. And I'm, um, I'm kind of anxious and eager to figure out how to tap into that potential as I scale because um, I think that could be so amazing and it could kind of be a, a uh, demonstration space. This is Reba, she's kind of needy. Reba, everybody. Um, so in the grand scheme of things, I would love to have like this whole land rejuvenation space it totally sustainable totally renewable um all of these are just those those stupid buzzwords but um i'll even say the word regenerative how about that um but like i am completely convinced that we make exactly what we need and if we are told we need more, I feel like we're being lied to. Without falling into too deep of a conspiracy spiral here, um, I, I do genuinely believe we make what we make what we need and not any more, um, not any less. It's just how you use it. It's how you tap into it. And I think we've totally forgotten how to listen, listen to what we need. Um, and that's all I'll say about that. So, um, as Reba totally steals the show right now, and my hat goes totally crooked because I'm trying to keep the larva smells out of my hair. Um, so, which leads me to this, uh, other project segue. So I have behind me the filter 3000. Um, I'm experimenting with cleaning the odor out of the air with activated charcoal and biochar and it sort of works. It works when there's not a lot of odor to clean out of the air. It, it maxes out pretty quickly, especially when you feed like 500 pounds of meat to a 12 by 12 foot room filled with larva. It's, that's not, it's not a good ratio. So um, the next project I would really like to think about as I scale is I generate char I, I generate uh, compost that could be an effective biofilter and I have endless amounts of it. So theoretically endless amounts of it. I at least have cheap filters that way. 
these filters are $10 a piece. $10. $10, Reba. Who can afford that? I mean, if you could spend $10 four times, is that what you would spend it on? Is, no. So, um, okay, how do, how do I, how do I optimize this now? How do I keep the, like, keeping the particulate down? Nailed it. But how do I uh, level up and address odor? That's the next step. So I have some ideas with the compost and biofilter, but it's, it's going to take some engineering. What doesn't, you know? Um, so <laughs> that's, uh, that's next. Um, I'd like to incorporate some type of UV light to kill like mold or bacteria in the air. Um, I think that, I mean, we, I think we learned that that's a really effective way of, of killing like airborne pathogens. Um, I think that would be extremely important to incorporate into this, this whole setup as I scale. Um, so, <clears throat> so there it is. That's, uh, that's my latest science experiment right now. Um, Um, so glad Reba came in to, to add some personality to this video because it was so boring beforehand. Now she's, she's really, uh, added another dimension to it, right? Exactly. Um, so yeah, there, there, there you have it. Um, I don't see any more, any more, uh, flies mating on the floor to collect and put into the fly hutch, but I mean, they're super happy in the fly hutch too. I mean, I have, I have a lot of flies. A lot, a lot of flies, a lot of flies. So many flies, but I also have a lot of larvae too. Look how flushed I am because it's so warm in here. I find it super fascinating. I don't know if there's any way you yourselves can tap into this. If you have, if you find yourselves feeding like 90 bins of larva, this is the bonus. It's the tiny furnace that doesn't stop. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Keep it circular and um, hopefully see you on the other side of this latest cold snap. Say bye Reba. She's, she's terrible. She's terrible.